can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of inspiredinsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. This is part of top leader series, specifically top Israel business leader series. Uh, Lior, you know, I had um, Moise Navone from Mobileye, and he talked about Mobileye's journey of being acquired by Intel for 13.2 billion. So Bring will probably get acquired for a lot more than that by Amazon or Uber or someone. But um, I talked to Yossi Vardy and Jod Medved, and one of the questions I asked them, Lior, was, what was your biggest miss when investing? <laughs> okay. And Yossi said he missed on ways. He had the opportunity. John Medved said he had the opportunity to invest in Salesforce when it was like, because I guess he knows Mark Benioff, and he like, got offered very, 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 very early on and passed. So uh, anyways... We'll talk about that and much more. Go on inspiredinsider.com. Check out those episodes. This episode, before I introduce today's guest, um, is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And what we do is we help B2B businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients and give to their best relationships by helping them run their podcast. Um, and for me, the number one thing in my life Lior in general is relationships, and I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships. We were just chatting um, that um, if I Lior recommends any guests to me, I'm going. I have committed to um, putting a bring background on my Zoom so that everyone will see bring. Um, but I love to just give to my best relationships. So if you thought about starting a podcast, you can go to rise25.com and check out more. Um, today's guest, I'm super excited to um, introduce to you. And I want a big shout out to Ayala Dobkin for introducing us. She does all things communication. She's worked with Amex, eBay, PayPal, many more. So thank you. Um, Lior Sion is co-founder and CTO of Bring. And what Bring does is it's a SaaS technology to, to improve your company's pickup and delivery speed, capacity, customer experience, if you do any delivery or fulfillment, it's mission critical, and they've helped brands like Walmart, Coca-Cola, Panera, KFC, and many more. Um, and Lyra, I was saying, like, do I do a good job explaining it? And, and I was actually joking that I was on with a founder, um, and I was telling him about it, and about, shout out to Austin Clark. He's at Moxie Pest Control, and I was saying, this could work for you because someone calls, and they give you a window of like, I'm going to come in from 10 to 2. I'm not saying this is for Moxie Pest Control, but for a lot of service companies. What if you can send a text to your customers, they click on it and see exactly where that service professional is in the journey. So you're not like, can I go take a quick shower? Can I go quick, make a quick lunch? Can I let the kids out in the backyard? How is that, Leroy? Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So first, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. I'm also excited to be here uh, with, with the likes of uh, Vardy and, and others. But uh, um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, this is part one part of it. This is the customer experience part, and you're very accurately describing it. I think the the other thing is the time wasted for the company itself when when you know when the service piece will arrive and there's mm. nobody there to wait. Um, so it's like, like you said at the beginning, it's efficiency, it's customer experience, it's reducing calls. It's, it's everything fulfillment. Um, you know, if you if you want to have like real experience for your customers, if you have to be efficient, um, especially now with COVID-19 and, and everything that's happening, um, bring is there for you. So it's a big money saver and time saver. It's 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 a change. It's a change in conception. You have to do it, um, and and it saves you money. So it's, so it's a win -win you situation. know the magic. Ever, any company is always trying to attain is product market fit. Okay, yeah. so you were toe to toe with some of the biggest early on biggest names, and they were giving you feedback and telling you what they like, what they didn't like. Um, talk about maybe you know we'll talk about Walmart, Coca Cola. What, what did Coca-Cola tell you? How did you describe it and what were they telling you? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so I'll start with the product market fit because I think this is, uh, this is magic and, and a lot of people are talking about it. 
Um, but it's really magic when it really happens. You know, uh, when it happens, it happens. You know it. And, and one of the things that happened to us very early on is that, um, that, that we knocked on doors and we sent LinkedIn messages and so on and so forth, the way you, you, know, you, you hack around when you're an early stage startup. <laughs> uh, the difference, though, was that every door opened. Everybody answered us. Uh, not everything end up, ended up with a deal, you know, it's, it's not magic. It's not that good of a magic, but, but every door opened. Um, and we saw ourselves from the beginning, from a five people company to a 20 people company to a 30, 40 people company, speaking to the global CIOs and CEOs of companies, like you said, like Coca-Cola, like, like Walmart, uh, Panera and, and, and others. And, and it's amazing that they are even speaking to us, you know, personally. Um, and it proved to us there is the pain that we are talking about, you know, it's real. Um, that's the product market fit. I think uh, actually the, the CIO of Coca-Cola, uh, they actually approached us at some point, very wow. early on. They, they approached How did they hear us about you? They, so there's, there's a program in Israel called The Bridge. It's a very good program. Um, it's like uh, an accelerator, uh, that, but they take no money. They give no money and they take no, no equity. Uh, their objective is that startups in the program close deals with, uh, uh, it used to be only Coca-Cola today, there are other big enterprises there. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's like, it, it gives the, the startups access to the biggest uh, names in the world, but on the other hand, gives these big enterprises access to startup and technology. So it's, it's yeah. like, it's a win-win situation. Anyway, they approach us, um, and, and they told us that, you know, the CIO of Coca-Cola wants us in the program and we are like, listen, you know, it's amazing and everything, but we are a five people company. We don't even think they can close deals with the companies like us. And it's not exactly, we are not exactly sure that we can solve something for Coca-Cola. If you don't know, by the way, Coca-Cola has the biggest fleet in the world. They probably have more cars than, you know, FedEx, UPS and DHL combined. Right. Uh, they, are just, they, are, they are an amazing marketing company with great logistics. And we are like, okay uh what, what we can uh, do you uh how we can help you and, and he said you know i actually thought about bring before you did I, i've been thinking about bring um for two years uh of something like that and, and i've been trying to do it in coca-cola i spoke to uber uber were you know interested in doing their own stuff um and i was just looking for it and then i saw something about you and this is exactly mm. what i want wow. i need to be able to 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 enable he wants to shape to it this he experience. wants to shape it he wants to give the experience to his customers that's the most important thing mm. um, and and it's a relationship thing and it's a global company and they understand that happiness is very important to the customers and they want something like dream so this is how it started um again very early for us which which was which fortunate um what was your pitch what was your pitch to, to coke uh, and walmart it, so it, that they're like oh this is because you obviously had a pitch down that you demonstrated that you solve a pain point for them so, so actually it was for coca-cola it was early walmart was slightly later but for coca-cola it was really like that like uh, uberize your you know your, your experience um mm. I'm, and people I'm know exactly like what that means. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 2013, 14. It's like track, real-time tracking of whomever is coming to you with ETAs and times and so on and so forth. That was yeah. a very beginning. Walmart, you know, it, it was a little bit later. It was about um, creating the, your own. They, they wanted to create their own crowdsourcing fleet to deliver from groceries. They, they, we, we met or, you know, we, we started working with them when they already understood that grocery is going to be huge. Uh, today it's obvious, right? A lot of the things, this is what's funny in, in this world of deliveries and experience. I'm talking about things now and everybody's like, but of course, you know. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I watched a video of you talking in 2015, you know, and it wasn't so obvious early on. Right. Yeah. When, when we started, you know, Amazon was a losing company, right? So, so who says that they will win? You know, today it's very easy to say, okay, Amazon is, is amazing. And, you know, for every $2, if not more these days, Every two dollars spent on e-commerce in the U.S., one of one is going to Amazon. So it's not a question anymore. And and, mm -hmm. and you say you want to have an Amazon-like experience, everybody says, of course. But you know, seven years ago, it wasn't as clear. Uh, we, which is good for us because we are, you know, we are the leading company. Not many companies, if any, started so long ago. Uh, when you are selling to enterprises, you know, security and privacy and integrations and capabilities and scale and performance, uh, the basic stuff. 
I'm not talking about features yet, but you know the basic stuff that you have to to have in order to work with the, you know with the biggest customers in the world. We already have that. Yeah, so yeah. So it's basically also like important. Uberize sure your customer experience, or like let's talk. They are. So what right. happened next with Coca Cola? So they had this uh, this uh, thing in in Vietnam, uh, <laughs> which was you know bring took me to the weirdest places in in the world. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, we are actually working in 50 countries today. Mm. Uh, so, so I've been in many, many places. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they were in, in Vietnam. They were trying to uh, basically provide this, this Uber experience to uh, what we call out of stock. Out of stock is a situation with CPGs. Uh, when, when small uh, businesses that sell the merchandise ran out of stock. Um, and, and basically the biggest two problems there is first knowing when you're out of stock and second, replenish quickly. Uh, so we help with the replenish. So once you, you know, it's like an Uber, like find the best, uh, wholesaler or provider or something and make sure that they have a signed driver and, and send the driver as soon as possible. So is it like an automated fashion? Like it automatically, so, you know, they're out of stock and that it allows them to just fill in the stock as soon as possible. Right. Before think, maybe there'll be Uber. a big delay. Right. Think about Uber, where they find the best taxi for you. Yeah. This, we, we, we allow them to custom the, the business logic for this, what we call auto-dispatch. Um, so they custom the, the logic in real time to choose, you know, place with stock and, and, and business relationship and so on and so forth. Uh, but basically, it, it allows them to do whatever they want. One yeah. of the things that we believe in bring. Uh, we always call it unopinionated uh, operating system. So we, we don't have opinions on, on what's good and what's not. We are an operating mm. system. You as a business or our customers as businesses, they are the professionals in their world. So they, what we help them is to introduce them to the system and capabilities and the belief that we have, and notice that it's coming from the CTO, the belief that we have is that technology is just a tool. Technology is not is not a target. Technology is just a tool to create business value. Um, and my objective as a CTO is to create this technology that allows them to do everything. Um, so one of our advantages, I think, is that we you know we created the system from the beginning. We were not a service provider ourselves, and try to do something else with the technology. We just created technology to serve others. Yeah, I want to get deeper into what happened with Walmart, but um, just play out the story with Coca-Cola because early on it didn't turn out as, as someone would have expected considering that conversation. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, it's, uh, it's a complicated world. You, you learn a lot. A lot of people will tell you that you start entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs can only be people who don't know the world because it's, uh, if you knew the, the amount of hardships that you will see, you will never do anything. You will never leave the house. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, uh, but you know, we, we went into the world of Coca-Cola. By the way, the Vietnam thing was very successful, um, you know, in, in all aspects. Um, and, and then we learned about the structure. I mean, to date, again, it's, Things that are very clear, but uh, you know, franchisee uh, Coca-Cola is a franchisee um, business. There is the HQ, and and many others are like that. And then it turned into um, ba basically the CIO is is the head, and and they want us, and and they are by by the way, they became a customer and they became an investor even later. Uh, but from that on, you have to uh, basically close a deal with every franchisee around the world. It's a long process. It takes time. We have a few installations in different parts of the world. Like I said, I travel a lot. Oh, yeah, I used to travel a lot. I keep forgetting. I don't right. travel anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's uh, and the business cases, they change. They vary. It, it's everything from everything. Yeah. But originally, you were talking to the CIO of Coca-Cola. Yeah. Right? He, he was like the entry point. And, and when yeah. the entry point is CIO, um, it just gets better. Yeah. So Walmart, what feedback, what happened Walmart? Walmart, uh, Walmart, I think the, the interesting feedback. About, yeah. Uh, I think Walmart taught me that, um, that sometimes as an entrepreneur, many times people are frightening you or, or you're frightening yourself by uh, what will happen if, if big companies will do what I do. 
I'm a small company, I'm limited. What happens if Walmart chooses to do what I would do? Right. And what happens if Google does and so on and so forth, right? Um, and, and or Uber in, or Waze or, or oh, exactly. All the big companies, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean and it's a fear that, that keeps you up at night, possibly. Right, and, and, and uh, used to, used to. Used to, and okay. This is the secret I'm going to tell you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean they, they can't, honestly, they can't. Um, not because they don't have good people, they have amazing people, but, but the, they, have, they, have a, they have an existing business. And existing businesses are never perfect. They always draw your attention. They always take all the resources you could. I mean, if, if, if any of those companies had extra resources to do whatever, and they don't need them in order to face the troubles that they have in a daily day situation, they would be out of business, right? So they are fully exhausting all of their resources and, and, and it's very hard for them to do things that startups do. There is a reason startups keep coming up, uh, right? And those, those companies don't- They're fast, cannot, they're agile. They are fast, right. they are agile, they, move, they adapt to the, to the situation. You know, it's, it, there's, there's a reason for that. Um, I think, by the way, one of our challenges, if you realize that is one, one, is one of my challenges um, is as we grow, not to become this company, right? <laughs> uh, don't forget that you know right. we are we are 150 Your people roots. now. It's, it's not, yeah. not that big, but somebody can come with five people and do things, things that we can't. So we have to make sure that we are agile and fast as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of the things that uh, uh, you know Walmart taught me. Walmart, I think, has 10,000 developers around the world. You know, wow. it's a huge company. They have like two 2.5 million employees, right? It's like a, it's a country. Um, but, but, you know, they have their limitations and everybody has IT resource issues. Nobody can get the developers they want. Nobody. Um, and, and there you go. There's and they have certain, you know, they have certain priorities. Like you said, they're presently serving their current customers, which is, is just a different model than what you're doing, you know? So right, I know. they have to run huge stores. They have to run logistics of inventory. They have to purchase and buy and decide and they have a website and they have e-commerce and they have a million countries and you know whatever they're, they're i mean that busy. also comes Lior, from you you know being in the inner workings of that because you and rd and ibm right uh I, ibm I, I was very lucky by the way ibm um i joined 2000 i think six uh, it was a 50,000 developers uh company back then 400,000 total and I joined as they were going through um, adapting to agile development cycles. Hmm. Um, and it was actually, a, I was astonished by how a big company like that makes a change like that, committed to it, and how they move. Obviously not fast, right? <laughs> uh, like but, a but, huge but, ocean boat right, freight or something. It's, it's not two weeks, right? Yeah. It's not a decision. Uh, but it was much faster than I assumed. Mm. Uh, they took it really seriously. They, 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 they found champions. Today, I can tell you that in, in retrospective, IBM is, is doing a lot of things correctly. Yeah. Um, and and it, was, uh, it, was, it was fun to see. It was also, uh, I saw the power of selling a, a, a product when you're a huge company. Um, how many people are, are buying your product because it's good and how many people are buying your product because it's IBM. Um, you know, you have to be honest, uh, but, uh, why did you become a software developer? Uh, the first time I saw a computer, I became a software developer. Really? From early like, on? When, uh, yeah. Like fourth grade, hmm. uh, Texas instrument, um, uh, never, never played, never the game. TI-82? What did you? Uh, yes. <laughs> cassettes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you know, what's interesting too is um, you decided after the army that you'd never be an entrepreneur. Right. Why? Um, you, you, can, you can basically say that my parents are entrepreneurs. They're not yeah. in high tech. Uh, my, my, they, they have their own office, right? And my, my dad is a surveyor. Um, so it's not exactly an entrepreneur, but, but they started their own business, which is in a way that. Um, and they went to live in, in, a, in a city that they had, my dad had work in, and which was very remote in Israel. Um, so, so I lived the life of what it means to be an entrepreneur, including working on weekends, including the uptimes and the downtimes mm -hmm. and the stress and, 
You saw all of it. You felt I all saw of all of it. I saw all of it. And, what and, was some and, of the stress, uh, stress parts of it? You know, it's, it's stressful. Like I, I'm seeing today on a daily basis. Like, you know, you, you have, you finish one day and you're at the top of the world because you just spoke to the CIO of, of uh, Coca-Cola. And then tomorrow the, 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 the investor says they don't want to invest, whatever, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's ups and downs. Um, yeah. This is life. Um, personally, I think I was an entrepreneur. Uh, my DNA is entrepreneurial. Yeah. Like in reality, like I started working when I was five. I went to a, to a grocery store and, and, and said that I wanted, I wanted to join. So for a while, I, I fought this uh, instinct. Yeah. And I said I will never do it again. Uh, but somehow, somehow it creeped on me. And, and it's I part of your DNA. You can't yeah, escape it. Yeah, it's like it. you, you can't escape it. Actually, if people ask me, like to be honest, I, I have to tell people if, you're, if you don't have this bug, if you don't have to do it, just don't do it. Don't do it. It's <laughs> You're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> it just doesn't. It doesn't end. It's like uh, my co-founder. Uh, you know, I think from the second year that we've been working, he always used to tell me, "Listen, now we hired the first VP of R and D. Your life is going to be amazing from now on. It's going to be, you know." sailing like sweet sailing from here and then, and then a year afterwards oh we hired the first this and that now it's going to be so easy and then oh we raise our a round it's going to be easy from now <laughs> uh, i'm still waiting <laughs> he's a good visionary he sells the vision yes he, the, the sells, keeps uh, going. He's, he, he sold what he needs to sell so I, i'll continue to work but yeah i mean yeah it's, it's if you have to do it you have to do it so it doesn't really matter but if you don't don't how was the, how did the army shape you What's it? What's an interesting story from the army? Um, I think I served in a, in a in a computer unit in the army. Uh, I think I was the most injured soldier ever there. Uh, the closest thing I saw to a combat was, you know, uh, doom. Uh, and yeah, I, I just kept hurting myself for some reason. Just bad luck. Um, I think uh, technically it's, it's where I learned how to, it gave me my background. So, so I, I, I'm self-taught. Um, I learned from books. Uh, there mm -hmm. was no internet when I grew up. Uh, and this, and, and in the army, they, you know, they gave me object oriented, it was plus all, all the basic stuff. And they were, it was a very good, uh, I had a very good teacher. I mean, the, the basics, you know, that he taught me uh, were amazing. So for me, it was a shaping experience uh, on that side, uh, mostly. How did you meet your co-founders? Uh, both of us are actually ultra runners. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So uh, for people who don't know what that is, how long is how long ultra do you run running? For? Uh, is anything that officially it's anything that's more more than a marathon. Got it. Uh, like 26.3 miles, you're an ultra runner. Point, point zero 0.05, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you miss a turn in a marathon, you're an ultra runner. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, 50K, you know, 50 miles, 100 miles, whatever. It, it, it doesn't really matter at, at some point. <laughs> what do you do to train uh, for that? You just run a lot. Really? <laughs> you have to run a lot. Um, me, myself, you're asking? Going yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, like, you're I, going I just, on like I, a, what's the longest run you ever did? A hundred, well, I, I, I ran, Israel is like uh, 600 kilometers, give or take. So I ran from north to south, which is the longest uh, huh. route. Took me about 10 days. Wow. Um, yeah, it's like 60, 70 kilometers, which is about 40 miles, 50 miles a day. Um, but like I said, it doesn't, the, the distance doesn't really matter at some point because you run, you run in, you run on trails, running on flat land is not the same as running in mountains and running in rain is not the same as running right. in, you know, dry. Uh, but it's the experience. It's like you live the minute. Like wow. I'm a person who always think about the future and I plan and, you know, I, I strategize, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly you find yourself, you're so tired in an ultra run. You're so tired. You just think about what's the next step. You obviously don't think about the distance. Because you cannot think about the distance if you think you have a hundred <laughs> miles to run. You just quit. Happen. Yeah. Uh, but you think about the next step and, and now and what's happening and how mm -hmm. I feel and, you know, and, and, and it's fun. So, but you, so it, it like parallels met. entrepreneurship in a lot of ways. You know it, I mean? it parallels a lot. It, I, I, it parallels a lot to entrepreneurship. I think it parallels to the world, to, to, to life. Sometimes you have to think about the future. Sometimes you have to live the now. So 50 uh, miles a day. 
So at the end of the 50 miles, you just find someone's house to stay. What do you do? Uh, so, yeah. so uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it varies. Uh, in some cases, we, we didn't plan any. Like we planned sleeping outside. Uh, but in some cases, there were people that heard about us and, and saw us and they invited us in. And some some cases we slept out. And then what do you bring for, for eating, like for food and drink? If you, you eat, uh, first you eat everything. You're hungry. I mean, you time. have a backpack with just no, like but we, we bought, we, we bought along the way. We Got bought, it. Like, you you know, just stop off and yeah. yeah. So G- Guy is the one who's also an ultra runner? No, so, so my, uh, Ranan was my co-founder. He left uh, about two years ago. Mm. And we took Guy as the CEO. Um, yeah, two years ago, he came. Guy came from Splunk. I actually uh, know Guy from Emblaze, which I both of us worked in about 20 years ago. Really? Uh, yeah, incidentally, and then he moved with with Blade and then other companies to the U.S. So he was 18 years in the U.S. Um, and then he came back uh, to Israel. I stayed here the whole time. Um, this is Guy. Um, yeah, well, Anan and myself, we you know I used to I used to have the ultra running site of Israel. We call it Distances, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah. So we just you know it's like it was like. A, content site and, and Ryan was writing it in it. So this is how we knew actually. We when met. you're running for 50 miles, what are you doing? Are you listening to music, books, like coding everything. things in your brain? Every, what do you, what everything. do you do? Everything. Everything. It, it's a long time. It's a long, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's a long time. It's, it's like, it's, so you, so did you code I, 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 bring on your 100 mile of, trip or what? Did, a, a lot of it. You, you code <laughs> a lot in your head. You listen to podcasts, you listen to books on Audible. Sometimes you, you run without anything. Sometimes it's music. I actually do my, uh, some of my calls, like my business calls while I'm running. Mm. And not on the 50 miles, but if I run like 10, 15 miles, like I can talk during. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a time saver. So, so I actually save time. I don't waste it. Yeah, I, yeah, totally. I figured that was such, that would be the case with you. Um, your co-founder. So mm-hmm. what ended up happening? Uh, we scaled, we grew, um, he's an amazing entrepreneur. He knows how to start things from nothing. He's like a bulldozer, like nothing can stand in his way. Uh, but you know, at some point we grow and, and, and what replace, what needs to replace in, in a bigger company, what needs to replace this capability is the ability to build the system. Hmm. Uh, it needs to be agile. It needs to be fast. It needs to be dynamic, but it's a system. Um, and, and, uh, it was not for him and, you know, his kids grew up, he has four kids. Uh, yeah. they, I, I think one of them actually joined the army today, Wow, which is also funny because I was in a, her bat mitzvah. This is how, <laughs> when we started and now she's joining the army. Wow. So there you go. Is that, that's gotta be a tough decision and a tough conversation. I imagine. It depends on, on the, it depends on the maturity, I think, and, and needs in life and how much you're connected yeah. to who you are and what you want to do. I mean, we, as I said, we are still friends, good yeah. friends. I, I think we speak every two or three weeks. Um, we both run still. Uh, so that's good. And yeah, so, so it's a, it's a maturity thing. Uh, yeah. I think. yeah. I mean, cause I was talking to a founder the other day, Leor and we were just talking about this exact topic is one person who started their company and it's just, it's kind of grown beyond them and even what they wanted. And it, this is, people are going through this every single day. You know, it's mm-hmm. like their baby and it's almost like you're kind of, you know, releasing it to the world or releasing it to the <laughs> next stage, you know? Right. So, yeah. So I, I think, I think this is a very good comparison. I mean, yeah. I always compare it to my kids. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, what, you know, at least I believe what's my objective with my kids, my objective with my kids is that they will be happy. It's not that they will be with me and they will do what I say and then blah, 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 blah. That, that too. They will be happy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that too, at the beginning, at least for the first 25 years, but later yeah. someday they could, they be allowed to leave the house and it will be outside my control. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, you have to, I, I hope that I will be mature enough to let my kid go. <laughs> and do his stuff because he's, he's crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I want to talk about just 
some big challenges, milestones along the way. Um, at what point in the journey do you decide to raise money? From the get-go? Yeah, from the get-go. I mean, for, for Anand myself, it's, it was not our first startup. Um, I was CTO with Get and with Clarison. Uh, Get is a, like an Uber competitor in, yeah. in a few countries. Get Taxi. Uh, Get Taxi. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I, I had my own startups uh, before. Ranan actually had an IPO with his, for, with his previous startup. So it was not a first kind of uh, rodeo attempt at this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and like I said, Ranan has four kids. At the time, I had only one, but. We, we, we knew that we need, uh, we needed not, not immediately, not, not like on day one, but within six months, we're going to have to raise money. Um, and we did. So, How was that process? Uh, surprising actually. Uh, really? uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we started with, with this concept of bringing, we started talking to everybody, everyone, like from retailers to deliveries to, um, um, you know, mobile workforce management to to a lot of those companies, uh, one and, and to investors, which is something that I strongly believe. Start to talk, start talking to investors as soon as possible. Not because you are raising money, because you are trying to understand what they are looking at and what they're looking for, and you fine tune your your speech and you know whatever. Yes. Uh, along those, uh, uh, with this time, we, we we spoke to the to the to the team in Ituan, which is a uh, Nasdaq. Uh, traded company Israeli though uh, that that has fleet management and the reason we talked to them was about the fleet management um, they heard what we were doing and they said you know uh, are you raising money we might want to invest and then we said we don't know blah 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 uh, they actually said you know we can invest up to a million dollar um, and if it's interesting let's do it um, long story short, we had a few options, a few VCs. Uh, they ended up investing in Toran, which is something I'm, I'm happy uh, to, de- to this day. They invested in a seed of 2.5, which is more than they are used to, but there was some competition there. Um, they are a great team. They are an amazing family, um, you know, on the, on the personal level, which, uh, which I think is super important as for your investors. At what point, we are, where's the product at? when you go to invest? Like, did you have something to show them? Is this an idea that you talk to? I'm sure everyone's in different stages of where they invest, but the early on investors, what did the, the company in the, in the platform look like? Yes, so, so yes, yeah, so, so I'm a good developer. I've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. Um, so so there, was, there was a walking prototype yeah. by that time. We actually had one or two customers already um you know we had most of it uh the concepts even didn't change that much during the year uh they became much nicer once we hired a a designer because i'm not a designer uh but but in terms of the product um the definitions didn't change that much Uh, we are quite lucky in that spec we we didn't do a pivot or something like that we knew what we wanted to do and we, we went with it so they they had a working uh, product, not only a product. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So they could see it, they could feel it. You had customers, and it's not like you went to them just like with a sketch or something like that. So at the beginning, we we came in with a sketch, but like yeah. I said, for, for in, in with the in the beginning, we didn't even know they were investors. We came to talk to them as fleet management company. Uh, but but it doesn't really matter. Even for for uh, investors, I strongly suggest that you talk to them from day one. Even if it's like uh, you know an investor that only uh, raises ten millions and they are not doing seed, and you need a seed round, and they are not relevant to you, you want to know what they feel, what they think about uh, how we, you will be ready for round A, and you want to know if there are things around seed that they don't don't accept, and you want to show them that you are making progress. So you're speaking to them, you have an idea, you have a sketch, and then three months later, you're speaking to them and you have a prototype and three months later, you have a product and it's just like the sketch you showed. That means for them that you're an executioner. Mm. You thought about something, you did it. Mm. We're not talking about money at all at this point, but you are already there for them as you know, one, one of the things that they need to cross about you once they want to invest, they crossed. You're an executioner. You do what you said. Uh, obviously, they will look at the business model and buy a lot of things. But but you you want to create this uh, this line, this story 
uh, in their mind. Yeah. So talk to invest. And by the way, at the same time, you improve your pitch. You talk to a few investors, they don't understand what you want. And then you talk to a few others and they understand what you want, but they are not convinced that it's needed. Right. Um, and then you talk to a few more and then it start making sense. Lira, what's the best advice you got, you had in this journey, whether someone decided to invest or not invest, what's, what's a piece of advice someone left you with that made you think maybe made you change something or keep something the same? Uh, charge more. Charge, charge more. more. That's what they said. Yeah. Uh, charge more. We, we actually, I, I remember the day that we decided to charge $200 a month uh, from customers. Uh, we were scared. Um, I can say a few words. I don't think it's allowed in podcasts, but uh, we were very scared. Uh, who, who's going to pay $200 for this? You know, it's like, why? Um, and, you know, today we are closing a multi-million dollar deal. So apparently some people will pay yeah. Uh, once, by the way, once we did that change to 200, I think three months later we did to 600, uh, two months later to 2000, it was very fast. We suddenly, you know, the appetite opened and we understood that people are willing to pay and it's amazing. Mm. Who told you that? Do you remember? No, I don't like that. Oh. Six years ago. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things you talked about before is you can't make mistakes as a startup. And you referred to there's an outage of one hour versus three days. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Um, I hope I said you can make mistake. I know you can't. I mean, can there's just, there's less of, uh, I guess, leeway when you're compared to a larger company is what right. you were saying. You, you cannot completely screw up. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I, outages and bugs and so on and so forth, everybody has. And I think actually, um, this is one of the things that differentiate or can differentiate you. Not that you don't have bugs because everybody has bugs, but how you respond to them. Um, this reliability, this partnership, this, this uh, you know, uh, honesty about who you are, what you are, what you're trying to do. And, and sometimes you mess up. Uh, one of our customers actually told us once that, that, you know, he sat with us and, and it's a multi-million dollar customer. And, and they said, listen, you are one of the most difficult companies to work with and we love you. We will never replace you. I wish everybody were like you. Um, and and it's, it's good or bad and, and bad in a way. Yeah, what did, what did want, they mean by that? So, so we, we are challenging our customers. Mm. We want them to succeed. We, we have this belief. Uh, we, we are in a very challenging environment, not only us, also our customers. Amazon is fighting from one side. Technology is changing. Laws and rules and regulations are changing all the time. COVID-19 suddenly appears. There's a lot of challenges all the time. Um, so, so, and a lot of companies fail. And, and we said, what's more important for us with our customers? Is it that they will be happy? Or is it that they will be successful? What's more important? Hmm. Uh, and we decided that we want our customers first to be successful. Second, close second, right? We don't want an angry, an angry customer. Uh, we care about our customers deeply. Uh, first, that they will be successful. Close second, that they will be happy. Um, and, and because if they are not successful, at the end of the day, they will want, not want to work with us or they will just close down and cannot work with us. Uh, so we need our customers to be successful. We actually build the company and the business model around the fact that they are successful. What's a, a time Lira, that you remember that you had to challenge someone that maybe was uncomfortable to challenge that customer, but you did it because you wanted them to be successful? Oh, it happens all the time. Yeah, It happens all the time. It's easy, but that's easy because uh, so, some of the concept of product work um, by the way, we didn't say that at the beginning, but I'm responsible for product and, 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 the, and technology. Um, but in, in product, it's very easy to think about ideas. So, sometimes people mistake product for people who think about ideas. Actually, one of the most difficult things about product is what to say no to. Hmm. Because most of the things you say no to, you don't have the resources, you don't have the time, you don't have the, the capabilities, it's not important enough. It's true, it's a good feature. I'm not even arguing about the features mostly because the features are good. People are smart and they, they, uh, they have ideas. They have a need, uh, but, yeah, right. but, but most of the features are just not needed. They, they will not move the needle, right? 
Um, and these are the features that you're looking for. It's nicer, it's easier, it's faster. You know, some features do this and that. But it's important to concentrate on things that, that actually will make you successful. So, uh, and it's, very, it's easier said than done. What yeah. I just said is much easier said it's than It's a done. gray area because how do you decide on what needs to, what's essential as opposed to maybe a nice to have? Right. It's, I, I can write a book on that, but that's, that's, the, that's the product. That's the work of a product person. Um, um, and this is what product people do. Uh, but to your question, yeah, so you have, you have to work and, and talk to customers all the time uh, about what's needed, what's not needed, uh, and why. Yeah. You know, I have two last questions I always ask, Leo, since it's Inspired Insider. One is, what's been a really low moment, challenging moment that you had to push through? On the flip side, what's been a especially proud moment? Before I ask those two questions, um, I encourage people to check out bring.com. And that's B-R-I-N-G-G. -G. Like you see, if you're watching the video, you can see it behind Leo there. Those are the two G's in bring. So don't forget it. It's two G's.com, not one G. Um, so before I ask that, Lyra, I'm curious talking to you. Um, who should be using bring that is not using bring? Like we're talking directly to those people. Like, listen, right. you need to check out the platform. Why I mean, if you have checked it out, why aren't you using it? Who should be using right. it? So, so I think um, COVID-19 is changing a lot of things. Um, and, and I think one of the most, um, one of the most interesting trends in the world is that people are staying home more and people are investing in their home, both because they are in there and, and, and also because they have time. And so I, I'm a strong believer in, in, uh, home improvement, uh, like the Lowe's and the home depots. Mm -hmm. Uh, the experience though is, is, is challenging. Uh, if you've ever ordered. Um, I think it, it, uh, there was some leeway, leeway for a while because people were home all the time and you don't really care when it's coming because you're just stuck home and you're just waiting for something good to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but it's ending, right? People come and leave and, and basically they want to be back to, to controlling their lives and you want to know when somebody's coming again. Um, and I think there is huge, huge, huge in, 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 in the whole big and bulky, um, you know, arena, which is delivering big stuff, um, closets, home improvements, and so on and so forth. Um, I think there is a huge value. So Lowe's, Home Depot, who else? Should Ikea, be yeah, you know, we are, we are in 50 countries, so the, the, the brands vary. Uh, what we hmm. just said is the U.S. mostly. I got US you. in Canada probably. Like Ikea? Ikea? Like Ikea? Ikea for a yeah. while, yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll email this to Jay Stein, a past guest, but it was Jay Steinfeld who built up blinds.com, started with $3,000, built it to over $200 million in revenue and sold it to Home Depot. Now he there works at Home Depot. So <laughs> Jay, I'm going to send this to you. You can watch it. Um, so last, last two questions, Lior. Um, what's been a challenging moment, low moment in this crazy journey? Everything has been challenging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you wake up in a cold sweat. Uh, yeah, like, from everything, you know. I think uh, I'll give you two answers. One of them might might not be the, the normal one. Okay. Um, in Israel, uh, it's a small country. Uh, most of the startups uh, are building to be to to different markets. Um, the Israeli market is not big enough to be interesting. Uh, it's an advantage and a disadvantage, but, uh, but anyway, it is what it is. It does mean that as a founder, you travel a lot. So I used to travel before COVID like once a month to the U S which yeah. is a minimum of a week. It's not a, a quick jump somewhere. And, and, and it's a challenge. It's challenging on the family it challenges, challenge. you know, like I can't even remember the last time I slept for two straight nights at the same place. Uh, sleeping in a hotel is a bonus, not sleeping on a plane. Uh, so, so it's been, it's been a huge challenge throughout, uh, especially on the family. It's, 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 uh, yeah. now I have a one year old, um, and, and because of COVID I'm home and Sunday I see all the things that I didn't see when, when, with my first kid, like he's mm. walking and he's talking and he's trying and, and it's fun. And, and you know, I yeah. missed it on, on the first go. 
Um, so, so that, that's a challenge. Um, low points, speaking of low points was the every time that I left and my kid is crying. <laughs> it's a low point. I thought that'd be a high um, point if they're crying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. If they're it's crying because the they're ego. it's not so good because crying because they're you're they're you're leaving is a low point. Crying, right. throwing a tantrum is a high point. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the I mean, um, you know, there there was there there are these points that you, you know you you are um, you you are not performing to to the best of, of a customer. You really care about your customers. They they are sometimes have low points and they are unsuccessful. Um, and, and w- when you care about what you do and it's, it's important for you to deliver value, it's, it's a low point. And, and yeah. There are many like that. Yeah, totally. Um, a high point also, there are many of those. So like I said, entrepreneurship is, is ups and downs all the time. You raise money. It's a high point. You, you win a huge customer. It's a high point. I remember the first time we, we had, uh, you know, more, more than a million dollar deal. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Today we, we kind of do it almost all the time. So it's not, uh, it's, it's still amazing, but you don't feel the same. And, and, and even thinking about it is, is makes me happy. Like yeah. we are in a place that, you know, it's, it's respectful. Um, and, and, and I remember I actually, one of the things that I loved the most was the first time we hit 10,000 deliveries a month. I actually, we were, again, we were very small. We were like five people back then. And, and I, I told uh, our uh, Android developer, who is still with the company, by the way, people stay with Brink for a long time. Uh, I told him, listen, we, you know, we hit this milestone. He said, there's no way, way it's free. You know, 10,000 deliveries? It's not going to happen, man. It, 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 it has to be bogus. There's some bug in the query. <laughs> um yeah and now we do millions a day uh yeah. so i always you know every so often i remind him that you know remember that <laughs> i love so, it yeah that <laughs> Lior, yeah. i want to be the first one to thank you thank you for sharing your journey your experience your knowledge everyone should check out bring.com uh b-r-i-n-g-g.com you know it's funny to look and see the excitement of the team and the company at 10,000 deliveries and $200, raising the prices to $200 a month. So Crazy. everyone check it out. Um, Lior, thanks again. Thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.